Hi folks, Shalom, and welcome to another edition of the Food for the Heart and Nourishment for the Soul Sabbath School Lesson Series. This week, our introduction comes from the Sabbath afternoon lesson study of lesson number 12, The Seal of God and Mark of the Beast, part two. The memory verse is found in Revelation 13, verse 10 of the New King James Version. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. In the 15th century, the Piedmont Valleys high in the Alps of northern Italy were home to the Waldenses, a people determined to stay faithful to their understanding of the Bible. As a result of their steadfast loyalty to Christ, they were fiercely persecuted. In A.D. 1488, the Waldenses in the Valley of Lois were brutally murdered by the Roman Church for their faith. Another wave of persecution came in the 17th century when the Duke of Savoy sent an army of 8,000 into their territory and demanded that the local populace quarter his troops in their homes. They did as he requested, but this was a strategy to give the soldiers easy access to their victims. On April 24, 1655, at 4 a.m., a signal was given for the massacre to begin. This time, the death toll was more than 4,000. History, unfortunately, is often repeated. The Mark of the Beast prophecy is about the final link in an ungodly chain of religious persecutions that go back through the ages. Like the persecutions of the past, it is designed to force everyone to conform to a certain set of beliefs and an approved system of worship. As always, though, God will have a people who will not capitulate. Now, why don't you get your friends and family together, open your Bibles, and let's study this lesson together. Welcome back. Shabbat Shalom, happy Sabbath, and welcome to this week's lesson, number 12, The Seal of God and Mark of the Beast, Part 2. Uh, thanks for joining us this week. It's great to have you back again, and today being Thursday, June 8, 2023, here in Hampstead, Maryland, uh, we're very excited to be able to share these lesson studies with you, and uh, hope that you enjoy them. Uh, before I continue, I want to ask you if you would do us the favor of hitting the subscribe button on the lower right-hand corner of your screen and liking this video. This will help us reach more people and be a blessing to this outreach. Thanks for doing that. Now, if you're new to our Sabbath School lessons, I want to let you know how happy we are that you've joined us. Uh, we look forward to you becoming regular viewers and fellow students. Uh, of course, now that you've found us, we want to get to know you a little bit better and uh, possibly where you're watching this video from. You can let us know this as well as what you think about our program and about these lesson studies by emailing us at reachoutforfood at gmail.com. So thank you uh, for that. And I want to thank the Lord for bringing us back to this uh, time when we can gather with our Sabbath school family and you to worship and study God's word together. Uh, we're a little short uh, tonight. Uh, there's uh, been some uh, issues that have gone on. Uh, however, we're a tight-knit group, and we're uh, ready to go, uh, raring to, to get into this lesson study. Uh, and so uh, just uh, going to turn to Sister Sandra. Sa Sister Sandra, thank you for being here. Thank you. So we're, we're, we're glad that you've, you've uh, joined us, and uh, you've been uh, uh, here with us steadily, and and. Uh, we enjoy your comments as well. Um, and next, we're going to turn to our panel of teachers. And by that, I mean Harold Green. Uh, we're going to go to the birthplace of Francis Scott Key in Keymar, Maryland. Harold, did you get out at all? 
Not today, but I've been out. I spent some time out yesterday, and and so it's it's working out. Okay, all right. Well, I got out uh, to pull weeds. Uh, Good, which I did. <laughs> and uh, I, I pulled and, a bunch last night. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. So uh, um, I'm, I'm I was happy to get that done, but also now I'm happy to be in here. Mm -hmm. uh, getting ready to study the word of God with all of you. Uh, of course, you remember that uh, the judge uh, down in Murphy, North Carolina is not in Murphy, North Carolina. He is out in Yellowstone National Park enjoying himself. And we're hoping that he's uh, continuing to have a good time and, and, and to be able to experience some great things and uh, be back next week, uh, ready and roaring to go uh, with our lesson study. So, um, that means the, then uh, that uh, I, I guess I'm going to be starting the lesson off. But before we do that, Sister Sandra, would you be able to have prayer for us and ask the Holy Spirit to be with us for this lesson? Yes, I will. Thank you. Dear God, most loving and kind Father, we come before you at this moment. Lord, we want to thank you for this opportunity that we have to come together and study your word. Father, your word is truth. And we need your truth, and the world needs your truth. Amen. Father God, we pray that your words and this study may reach as far as you would have it to go. Where we, your children, cannot reach, dear God, you can reach. So we pray for every listener, every viewer that will view and listen this video, and we pray that every word that we may say will be according to your will, dear God. We ask that the Holy Spirit will descend upon us afresh at this moment and lead us to this lesson study and that it would touch every mind and heart that hears the words. So we ask this all with thanksgiving, be with our fellow members that cannot be with us at this moment. You know the reasons. And we thank you that you are with us wherever we are. We ask this all with your name and given thanks. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Sandra. Okay. All right. So, um, again, it is my pleasure <laughs> to share with you uh, the, uh, the lesson uh, for Sunday, uh, Monday and Tuesday this week. And let's see if I can do this without any problems. I believe we've accomplished it. Thank you, did. So, awesome. Our lesson this week, uh, lesson number 12, entitled uh, The Seal of God and the Mark of the Beast, Part 2, is the uh, culmination of the study we began last week, and it covers June 10 uh, through 16. Uh, the first lesson begins uh, for Sunday, June 11, and is entitled The Deadly Wound. Now, before I begin, I, I, I wanted to share a few pictures uh, uh, to uh, sort of continue with the uh, introduction uh, that you saw in the opening uh, opening uh, video uh, concerning the Walt Dencies uh, that were mentioned uh, in the introduction. So. Uh, Here's a, 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 a few pictures. Here's a, a photograph here of one of the cave churches that the Waldenses worshipped in. Now, these clearly are not the Waldenses. This is a modern uh, group of, wor of worshippers uh, who are experiencing what it was like to be in the cave. Uh, you can imagine what it would have been like. Uh, certainly in the summer, it would have been fine. It would have been nice and cool. But in the winter... Uh, not so comfortable. Uh, there's not any nice pews there. There's no nice carpeting and and uh, air and and heat and everything. So uh, the people that were here worshiping and and reaching out to God were on fire for Him. And uh, and and the history of the Waldenses, uh, you can look up uh, and and uh, easily uh, Google to find a little bit more about it. Here's uh, what I believe is the. Uh, cave uh, opening to that same room that you saw a, a few minutes ago. Um, uh, this uh, is uh, uh, 
one of the stops in the Waldensian Trail of Faith, uh, and I'm not sure how to pronounce this. It looks like Torah Police, one of the group's major centers in the foothills of the northern Italian Alps. Now, Seventh-day Adventists have traditionally held a special affinity for the Waldensians, who during a time of religious oppression preserved and shared the scriptures despite grim consequences. Uh, Adventists share a sense of camaraderie with this group for another reason, too. Ellen White shares that through the ages of darkness and apostasy, there were Waldenses who kept the true Sabbath. Now, I did some investigation into this. Uh, and uh, not all the Waldenses, because the Waldenses were uh, in activity for a number, really uh, a, a few centuries. They actually began uh, as a group before uh, the, the Reformation began, just slightly before the Rep- Reformation began. Uh, and uh, they were there uh, 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 keeping the word of God and spreading uh, the, the, the good news of salvation. Uh, for a number of centuries, uh, this uh, place right here in Ter, uh, again, Torre Police uh, in the northern Italian Alps, here's another picture of it in, in Piedmont, Italy. And this was the Waldensian College of the Barbs. And the children and young people of the Waldenses were brought here uh, to be trained as missionaries to the world. And they were sent from here to villages and cities uh, both near and far into other countries to proclaim the salvation of Christ and the importance of God's word. And I just wanted to uh, show you a few pictures here and to give you a a feeling of what they were going through with persecution back then uh, to, to connect with the studies that were, we've been doing last, both last week and and this next week. And, and so uh, Uh, before you go on, yes, sir. Uh, I've been there in Toro Police. I've been there at the College of the Barbs. Nice. And uh, the uh, the 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 Waldensians uh, did keep the Sabbath for for many years mm-hmm. through through some serious persecution, but they they as a group, um, when when things started to actually lighten up. They changed. They 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 gave up on it as as a group. Hmm. I, I know that there was uh, that as I was studying this and looking into this that there were several times when they did and or and sometimes when they did not. Um, um, but we the way that we know of uh, the groups that did isn't really from any uh, writings from the Waldensians or from history other than from the Catholic Church. There has been found some documents where the Catholic Church, as they were pointing out the groups that they wanted to persecute, they mentioned the Sabbath-keeping Waldensians. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we found out, or we have, uh, you know, uh, know, the the, um, information about that right. it's it's quite it's quite um thought provoking i've been in some of the in uh, uh, a cave similar to the one that you you showed a picture um and and to, to think to to look around and, and realize that uh you know they were in there they were worshiping but they 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 had to be careful no man it, they they couldn't light a fire to keep themselves warm because the smoke would have come up and they would have shown where they were so yeah. and even 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 singing i mean we walked up a trail uh, and and there, we could hear people down in the in the cave so so they, they had to be careful uh, uh you know they couldn't be singing uh you know you know they had to be careful about everything i would imagine they would have had to have some uh, lookouts, even during the services, uh, looking to make sure that people weren't coming. Yeah, I'm sure there must have been. Yeah. But uh, anyway, just uh, very interesting, and I appreciate you showing. Well, you know, it, it's uh, the, the, this study is so powerful, and, and uh, again, the introduction uh, and the information we heard in the introduction is uh, quite moving. So 
Mm-hmm. I, I just wanted to have a connection there. So um, as we start start to the study for uh, Sunday, again, uh, we've already studied the beast powers of Revelation 13 and 14, and we know they represent a worldwide system of false worship, but there's more. Okay, so let's read uh, the scriptures on the screen in front of you. Uh, and um, I'll tell you what, I'll catch the first two here, but if I can get uh, Sister Sandra uh, prepare for Revelation 12, 14, and uh, Harold, if you could do Daniel 7, 25 mm-hmm. when we get to it. Okay, so we'll start with Revelation 13, 5. This is the New King James Version. Uh, there was given to him a mouth speaking arrogant words and blasphemies and authority to act for 42 months was given to him. So uh, we're given some information here about uh, a time period. Uh, and uh, he would, and, and uh, in this case, they're talking about the beast and the authority to act uh, for 42 months was given to him. Let's uh, keep in mind, and we'll, we'll see this again, that, uh, that months were 30 days. Okay, so uh, Revelation 12, 6 says, uh, Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God so that there she would be nourished for 1,260 days. Now, we know that the woman is the church, correct? We've mm-hmm. had that study uh, a number of times. Uh, and uh, this, is the, this is the remnant uh, have fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God so that there she would be nourished for 1,000. 260 days. Now, this is correlates to the 42 months of 30-day months. Okay, uh, Sister Sandra, Revelation 12, 14. Yes, reading from the King James Version. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, and times, and half a time from the face of the serpent. And we know the serpent is who? Satan. Satan. Okay, and uh, Daniel uh, 725, Harold. He will speak out against the Most High and wear down the saints of the highest one, and he will intend to make alterations in times and in law, and they will be given into his hand for a time, times, and half a time. So all four of these uh, verses uh, talk about a length of time uh, that this power would dominate the religious landscape in the previous centuries. So um, they're all the same. And they're all the same. Um, The beast would continue for a specific duration of time in history and symbolic time prophecies. A prophetic day equals a literal year. Uh, in Numbers 14.34, uh, we read, According to the number of days which you spied out the land, 40 days for every day you shall bear your guilt a year, even 40 years, and you will know my opposition. Now this, in Numbers, is talking about the children of Israel, is it not? Uh, after they had reached the, the promised land the first time, and they sent out spies to to look at the land, the good of the land, and the spies came back. And we remember the story because we've had that in our lesson study. For anybody that wants to go back and check that out, that there were 10 spies that uh, came back with uh, reports, of course, of, of, of uh, you know, uh, all the things they thought they were going to get in the land, uh, 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 good fruit, uh, a lot of prosperity, good land. But... They came back with a bad report as far as uh, their lack of faith, and we've been talking about faith, but their lack of faith in their ability to acquire this land that God promised to hand hand to them. The other two uh, uh, spies, um, which was Joshua and Caleb, came back and they said, yes, this is a great country and we should go and take it, but... um, the other 10 spies had already made uh, everybody so fearful that they were just, they were so angry at Joshua and Caleb, they almost wanted to kill them. Well, that's, a, that's another story. We've already had that story. I'm not going to continue further on that. 
But that's where we talk about, uh, uh, again, uh, a day for a year. But I think we need to point out, since you went into it that much, the, the spies went into the land for 40 days. And yes. When God when, uh, came back to deal with this, he said, uh, for every day that you were in, in spying out the land, you're going to be wandering in the wilderness for a year for every day. Yes. So they wandered for 40 years. Yep. So that's the connection. And of course, the 40 years, everybody under the age of, or above the age of 20 passed away with the exception of Caleb and Joshua. Caleb and Joshua, who did not come back with the bad report of a uh, lack of faith. Okay. Uh, Sister Sandra, would you be able to read Ezekiel 4, 6? Yep. And uh, Harold, uh, prepare for Daniel uh, 9, 24 through 27, if you don't mind. Yes. And when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days. I have appointed thee each day for a year. All right, again, uh, a day for a year, continuing this idea of prophetic time. And Harold, Daniel 9, 24 through 27. Seventy weeks have been decreed for your people and your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make atonement for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy place. So you are to know and discern that from the issuing of a decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. It will be built again with plaza and moat, even in times of distress. Then after the 62 weeks, the Messiah will be cut off and have nothing. And the people of the Prince who is to come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. And its end will come with a flood. Even to the end, there will be war. Desolations are determined. And he will make a firm covenant with the many for the one week. But in the middle of the week, he will put a stop to sacrifice and grain offering. And on the wing of abominations will come one who makes desolate, even until a complete destruction, one that is decreed, is poured out on the one who makes desolate. So, again, uh, we are continuing with this principle of a day for a year, in a, in a prophetic uh, a, a day for a year, and this principle has repeatedly proven itself accurate in interpreting biblical time prophecies, such as the 70 weeks of Daniel 9, 24 through 27 that was just read. Calculating the time period mentioned in Revelation 13, 5 of 42 months, with 30 days in a month, we come up with 1,260 prophetic days or literal years. Uh, the ancient calendar, calendars regularly had 360 days per year. In the 4th century, the Roman Emperor Constantine legalized Christianity throughout the empire. When he moved his capital in AD 330 to Byzantium to unite the eastern and western parts of his empire, it left a leadership vacuum in Rome. The Pope then filled this void. He became not only a powerful religious leader, but also a political force to be reckoned with in Europe. In AD 538, Justinian, the pagan Roman emperor, officially granted the Roman bishop the role of the defender of the faith. The medieval church exercised great influence from AD 538 to AD 1798, including in the terrible persecution mentioned in the introduction to this week's study. Napoleon's general, Batier, took the Pope captive in A.D. 1798 in exact fulfillment of the prophecy. Batier and his army captured Pope Pius VI and unceremoniously removed him from the papal throne. The blow to the papacy was serious, but according to Revelation 13:12, the deadly wound would be healed 
and the world would hear more from this power, a lot more. Okay, Harold, any last uh, possible words about uh, Sunday's lesson? No. Okay, so we're going to head to Monday, uh, uh, Monday's lesson, The Falling Away. So uh, let's read, uh, and uh, if you don't mind, uh, I'll pass these out to you too. Uh, Sister Sandra, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, and 4. And Harold, uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, uh, verses 9 through 12. Okay. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Thank you. So we're looking at uh, being told some characteristics here of uh of the beast. Uh, let's go ahead on with uh, 2 uh, Thessalonians 2, verses 9 through 12. That is, the one whose coming is in accord with the activity of Satan, <clears throat> with all power and signs and false wonders, and with all the deceptions of wickedness for those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth so as to be saved. For this reason, God will send upon them a deluding influence so that they will believe what is false, in order that they all, may, they all may be judged who did not believe the truth, but took pleasure in wickedness. <clears throat> so, um, what are the identifying marks? This is what the lesson asks us. Uh, what are the identifying marks, is, or what are they giving for the beast, the Antichrist power that you see in these? Two sections. Opposition to God's people and 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 uh, exalting himself is the first one. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then down on on the other verses, um, uh, deception, signs and wonders, signs and wonders, and uh, um, he, he, as you said, uh, Harold, he exalts himself above God. And he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. Right. So the Apostle Paul warns the Christian community of a falling away right. from the truth of God's word. Um, he's concerned about the seeds of apostasy already present in the New Testament church at that time, which would flourish in the coming centuries before the second coming of Christ. And we certainly have seen this. A counterfeit gospel would come into the church, distorting the word of God. The SDA Bible commentary states it this way. A comparison with Daniel's prophecy of the blasphemous power that succeeds that of pagan Rome and with John's word picture of the leopard-like beast reveals many similarities between the three descriptions of the little horn, the beast power, and the lawless one. This leads us to the conclusion that Daniel, Paul, and John are speaking of the same power, the papacy. Volume 7, page 271. It is extremely important to remember that Bible prophecy is describing a system of religion that has compromised God's word, substituted human traditions for the gospel, and drifted away from biblical truth. These prophecies are given by a God of incredible love to prepare a people for the coming of Jesus. They are a rebuke to apostate religious organizations that have departed from God's word and not necessarily the people in them, as stated in Revelation 18.4 that says, I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not participate in her sins and receive of her plagues. 
Our message is about a system that has deceived millions. Though deceived, these people are much loved by Christ. Hence, we must treat them accordingly. Okay, um, let's take a look here at Matthew 7, verse 12. Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Now, the lesson asks us, how must we apply this principle, the one we just read, in dealing with the theme of the beast powers in Revelation 13 and 14? Now, I'm going to ask for anybody who has an idea on this, but first I just want to just say that my perception on this uh, that I thought about was clearly the things we are warned will happen to those who obey God's commandments and resist in the mark of the beast will be applied by those who do not fit the description of the remnant. In other words, the 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 things that are going to be done to and against the remnant people are going to be people who do not fit this description of those who keep God's commandments and resist the mark of the beast. So anybody ha have anything else uh, that, uh, that concerns uh, applying the principle here of doing to others as you would want them to do to you? Well, I think I think that the last sentence and the main part of Monday's lesson, though deceived, these people are much loved by Christ, hence we must treat them accordingly. Yes. And 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 so, if 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 I was if I was deceived, I would I would hope that 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 Don, as if you saw that, uh, you you would not come and, and attack me. But you would uh, talk to me about it and try to point out my error, and and I think that's that's the whatever you want, however you'd want men to treat you is how we should be treating others. Yes, and I think that if I were to be the that person that would come and attack you for being deceived, that would eliminate me from being one of the remnant. I by, would by I definition do. and description. Right. So. Yeah. Okay, so um, we're going to move on to Tuesday's lesson, Satan's Final Strategy. And uh, Revelation 17, verse 12 through 14. Um, Sister Sandra, could you read that for me? Uh, Revelation 17, verses 12 through 14. Okay. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. So surveys uh, reveal a deep lack of trust in institutions and governments. I think we've seen a lot of that in the last couple of years. We don't even need surveys to tell us how we feel about trusting in these institutions and governments. Uh, millions wonder, where is there someone who is morally fit to lead the world? Um, by the way, the remnant are not among these that are wondering who is morally fit. Uh, we have the word of God uh, to, to, to lead us. Yes. Revelation's prophecies identify the beast power as the one who, under the auspices of a religious political union, will be the power believed fit to fill this role. And so thank you for having uh, read uh, the Revelation 17, 12 through 14 for us, uh, Sandra. And uh, these are, 
are three significant points that John makes in this passage. First, the political powers have one mind and give their power and authority to the beast. Second, this conglomerate of error makes war against Jesus the Lamb and therefore against his people, correct? Third, in earth's last war, Christ and his followers are triumphant. The beast does not win. Jesus does. Have you ever wondered what strategy the devil might use to unite the nations? History often repeats itself. We discover valuable lessons from the collapse of the Roman Empire. When the Germanic invasions from the north ravaged Western Europe, the Roman Emperor Constantine turned to religion. The authority of the church, combined with the power of the state, became the very instrument Constantine needed. The continual strengthening of the sanctity of Sunday in the 4th century was a calculated political and religious move to unite the empire at a time of crisis. Constantine wanted the empire united, and the Roman church wanted it converted. The renowned historian Arthur Weigel states it clearly. The church made a sacred day of Sunday largely because it was a weekly festival of the sun. For it was a definite Christian policy to take over the pagan festivals and endeared it to the people by tradition and give them Christian significance. The Paganism in Our Christianity, page 145. At a time of great crisis when all the world is scared, hurting, and fearful, people will be desperate for someone to bring stability and protection. This is how tyranny has arisen in the past, and there's no reason to think that it could not happen again. <laughs> Look what happened during the COVID pandemic. That was certainly a tyrannical display. According to prophecy, something will bring about these final events. Though it's hard to know how all this could unfold, the world has already seen how great changes can come, and very quickly too. Though we don't know details about what is coming, we need to be ready for whatever does come. Okay, unless you see some holes in uh, in what we've talked about so far, Harold uh, or uh, or Sister Sandra, we've come to the end of Tuesday's lesson. Uh, anybody have a thought that they'd like to add? Okay, Harold, in that case, um, tossing the ball into your court. Okay. <clears throat> well, I'd, I'd like to uh, approach the lesson for on Wednesday and Thursday in reverse order. Okay. I'd like us to, to look at the what what they have mainly down for this Thursday first, okay. because I think that's that's what God people want to see, and then I and it sees a contrast by going to the mark of the beast. Um, we've been seeing <clears throat> over the the last number of of years, um, you know, there have been Sunday laws. Uh, on the books for for years, but 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 we were seeing more interest in, and 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 the whole concept and the contrast between Seventh Day Sabbath and and Sunday, uh, over the last few years, uh, the quarterly points out that back in 2012, Pope Benedict the 16th made an urgent appeal to more than 15,000 people. Uh, gathered in at St. Peter's Square, that Sunday must be a day of rest for everyone, so people can be free to, uh, with their families and with God, uh, defending Sunday. Uh, by defending Sunday, one uh, defends human freedom. This isn't, of course, the same thing as demanding that others keep this day as opposed to the biblical Sabbath, but it does show the idea that Sunday as a day of rest is definitely a real issue. And and the, and uh, we'll I will no doubt be seeing more of that, and and and, and a, a, a more powerful uh, con conflict on that. But uh, the the question uh, as a Sabbath as as a as a test, 
as, as we the you look at the Exodus 20, the fourth commandment, uh, we can go ahead and, and turn there and, 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 and read it because uh, in, 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 in a seal, uh, you know, uh, uh, a, uh, if you need someone to notarize uh, some documents, uh, they they sign papers and then they have a seal. They seal in there. If you if you look at the state of flags, there, there's a seal, and there are three uh, uh, pieces that are in in the in the piece of, of, of a seal, and and that would be the, the title. The 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 uh, the reason why this is important and and also the the, the domain that it covers. For instance, uh, uh, if, it's, if it's a state seal, it would be the name of the state. Uh, uh, when I think of these, I always think of, of the Florida because of it, it, it says right on the flag uh, that has a picture of the seal and this and and and. The seal of the state of Florida. It says it right in there, and then and then you know, and then it, 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 you, you know what what it's got. And I I grew up in Florida, so I had to study some Florida state uh, history and stuff uh, growing up there and going to school there. That's why I my mind goes there. But if we look at this, the fourth commandment. Um, of course, we start with verse 8 in Exodus 20. Uh, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. You nor your son, your daughter, your male servant, your male, female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. That's basically what the, the commandment is saying. But then he goes on. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So here in, in verse 11, we have his title. Well, what is his title? Mm -hmm. His title is, is the Lord. The Lord. Lord. Sure. And what is his his uh uh, is a rationale or the the reason why he he uh, should be listened to because he is the creator the creator and what is his dominion cover what area the heavens mm -hmm. and the, the earth, earth the seas and the, the springs sea. of waters and all they contain so so we see right in there in the midst of of the commandments uh, God put his seal. And 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 we we can we can see that, uh, so we, we are. If we can go back to now to Revelation seven, uh, Revelation seven verses one and two. After the, after these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or on any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. So what did he have with him? The seal of the living seal. God. The seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to, not, to, uh, to harm the earth and the sea, saying, do not harm the earth until we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. So the... The seal it, it obviously is is part of the Ten Commandments, part of God's moral law. So when when the, this angel shows up, uh, he, he he probably had the law, and 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 he, he said, "Don't don't hurt the earth until we uh, put our seal on on the servants of God on their foreheads." Um, uh, uh, forehead is a symbol of our mind. Jesus wants us to to choose to to follow him, to, rather than uh, uh, to follow f f based on uh, fear or based on uh, uh, just uh, any other uh, reason for for the following. 
Uh, so we understand that the faithful are those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith in Jesus. That's Revelation 14, 12. And included in those commandments, obviously, is the fourth, the one commandment, the beast power thought to change. Mm -hmm. And and that brings us really, uh, if we see that the God's seal is is his is law, his commandments, and right in the middle of that is 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 a, the fourth commandment, the Sabbath, is, is a highlight of that. We would understand that based on what what Don you took us through on the early part of the, this lesson, uh, the Satan is is, is is out to deceive, to to oppose God's people. It would makes it makes only sense that that Satan would do something through his his um, instruments, uh, the, the, the people uh, do something to to counteract the 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 seal of God, and so what he's done, and that's where we see is is by by coming up with a a false day of worship, the you know, the uh, he 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 distracts and and pulls uh, the things away. And then, and then to 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 get people to follow it, he has to push them. Ha- there's there's deception, and then there's also um, uh, persecution, uh, and and on all of that that comes in. And, and so then we come and when we read in Revelation um, uh, fourteen, and we're t- looking at that. The, the, then uh, in verse nine, the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, "If anyone worship the beast in his image and receive his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength." But the point being that that receiving uh, the mark of his of the beast, the mark. Is is something that that identifies the beast the same as the as the God's law identifies God. What is it that identifies the beast more than 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 a a change of God's law to 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 a one that 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 uh, the, the beast is created through through his uh, instruments, and so that's where we come to it, uh, and we have this conflict. It's interesting that uh, we read here that the beast, the mark of the beast, is either in his forehead, in other words, like with God's law, is is, is a decision that people make based on their belief, or it's in their hand. And in their hand is just their actions. This is a symbol of, of their actions and what they do. And and they would do it, not necessarily because they believe it, but they do it to save their life. They do it because because as we uh, read later on, as in in, in uh, uh, talking about the beast uh, in Revelation, um, where is it seventeen or anyway, I, I, I mm-hmm. read later. That that it, that it's going to you won't be able to buy or sell, uh, and 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 so people are going to say I I I, I can't I can't eat I can't I can't get what I need to, to, for my family, so I'm going to do what it takes to to be able to 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 do that. So it's not because they believe in it, but it's it's, it's to to preserve themselves and and to to make life it's it's the mark in their hand, and so. We we come up with with both of these. Um, it says here the day is coming and possibly sooner than we think that laws will be passed restricting our religious liberty. Those who conscientiously follow the word of God and keep the true Sabbath of the Lord will be labeled as opposing unity and the good of society. Um, and also. Uh, uh, those who honor honor the Bible Sabbath will be denounced as enemies of law and order, as breaking down the moral restraints 
of society causing anarchy and corruption and calling down the judgments of God upon the earth. Their conscientious scruples will be pronounced obstinacy, stubbornness, and contempt of authority. They will be accused of disaffection toward the government. And this is why people will say, I, I, I can't be put myself in that position. Uh, I, 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 they may say, I, I don't, it's not that I believe in it, but I'm going to take the easy way out. Mm -hmm. um, and so that uh, is, is an important understanding of, of the mark of the beast. The question is, has the mark of the beast it um, happened yet? Can does, does anyone have the mark of the beast at this point? That is a good question. <laughs> okay. What what is it that 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 brings about the mark of the beast? Uh, if we uh, the uh, looking for the text that I, I stumbled over a few minutes ago because I think it lays it out better. Um, I'm sorry. Okay. I it's, uh, let me let me just while you're looking that up um I don't know what the answer is I'm I'm hoping that this verse that you're going to pull up is going to give me the answer but I don't know uh, it, it, is the bible clear on that the mark of the beast only comes at the end here when the sunday law comes up or could it happen before then when people's reasoning for keeping Sunday as opposed to Sabbath may be because of popularity, because of ease in the world, because of uh, 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 tradition. Uh, is 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 it only after a certain period of time that these marks come? Well, if, if you look at it, it was Revelation thirteen, and I that's why I, I, I my mind went blank because I went the other direction. Um, Revelation thirteen, when he's talking about. Um, uh, beginning in, in verse eleven, he's talking about the the a beast that comes up uh, on the from the earth uh, with the um, a spoke that has two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon, which we understand to be the United States. Mm -hmm. um, but then it changes because he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the beast. And, uh, whose deadly wound was healed. So it's clear uh, that who he's talking about, the same beast that, that you talked about that was taken when the Pope was taken captive. Mm -hmm. uh, he performs great wonders, sign, and makes fire come down from heaven inside of Manu Um And then go down to 15, he was granted power to give breath to the beast, to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image to be killed. So here we, we he's he starts it out where where there's a there's a, a uh, the persecution, and uh, just to generalize it, uh, persecution, and that's when it says he causes all all both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. So it's tied to the persecution or the decree. So what you're saying, Harold, and what the what clearly this the verses here uh, say is that there is yet time. There's yet time, and as uh, as God's people and His remnant, our job is to help try and prevent people from getting the mark of the beast. Exactly, exactly, and and that's really where I, where I'm going with this. You mm -hmm. you you. You you saw exactly the 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 path that, that we're going down, because identifying the 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 seal of God as as the Sabbath and the mark of the beast as 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 the Sunday worship, that's only part of the deal. Because really, it's a dis it's not the Sabbath and Sunday is not the issue. It's who we worship. Yes, so we're going to worship God mm -hmm. or the beast, Satan. That that's the question, and and so we get so many times people get stuck on what is the mark, what is the seal, 
and they don't take it to the next step, which is the, the it all represents who we are going to worship, either God or or, or Satan, <clears throat> or and the rules of man through worshiping Satan, the rules of God uh, for for him. So um, <clears throat> that that is it's the next verse that I didn't read in that. It says, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark of, or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So they're all tied together. It's the persecution starts and people, that is what brings people to a decision point. And, and that kind of thing is, is when the mark of the beast is, is applied as people respond based on this, which, who am I going to worship? Which is more important to me? And so I found something again that, that to take it from that to um, to our response. Uh, the the uh, uh, the wrath of man shall praise you. This is from uh, volume five of the testimonies. Uh, it's it's basically starting in page four fifty three. Um, the psalmist says, the, the wrath of man shall praise thee, the remainder of wrath shalt thou restrain. God means that testing truth shall be brought to the front and become a subject of examination and a discussion, even if it is through the contempt placed upon it. The minds of people must be agitated. Every controversy, every reproach, every slander will be God's means of provoking inquiry and awaking minds that otherwise would slumber. He's saying that these tests, these problems, these things come up. He allows them to come up, and and, and they're designed to to provoke uh, and awaken minds, so that people will question and and think about it. Uh, let's look at a a, a possible uh, scenario. You are a, a, an Ad, Seventh Day Adventist. You believe in the Seventh Day Sabbath. And, and there's a law put out that if you don't, if you keep the seventh day Sabbath as, as a, your worship day, um, you won't be able to, to, to buy, you won't be able to sell. And on a certain day in the future, uh, there's a death decree. Your neighbors know you're a, Sab you're a, Sab a Sabbath keeper. Tell me what's going to go through their minds. Mm hmm. <laughs> they're they're going to watch you. That all depends on how they feel about you. Exactly. <laughs> it depends on how how they how well you know them. They may come and talk to you. It may be good. We'll we'll, we'll fix them this time, or it may be concern. You know, if you've been friends, good friends with your neighbors, and they see this company, they're going to come to you and say, "Don, what are you what are you going to do now?" Their minds going. They're asking questions that, that you could never have got them to to open up and talk about. Um, has this ever happened in the past? Yes. It was the same way for God's people throughout the history mm -hmm. um, for refusing to worship the great golden image which Nebuchadnezzar set up. The three Hebrews were cast into the fiery furnace, but God uh, preserved his servants in the midst of the flames and the attempt to enforce idolatry resulted in bringing the knowledge of the true God before the assembled princes and great men of the vast kingdom of Babylon. Satan's plan backfired because yes. God was 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 uh, glorified through this the, this event because his people were faithful. Um, the same thing happened to Daniel. Yes, you know the, his 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 fellow. Rulers wanted to, to cause trouble for Daniel. They got the law, law to pass that, that he could no one could pray. Daniel was faithful. And what happened? Daniel was re rescued and delivered. And and uh and again God's God's name was glorified throughout the, 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 the realm. Uh Paul was put in prison. And, and and was able to because of that preach to to princes kings and and others so what does it mean for us this whole lesson 
Yes, I think it's important to know the mark of the beast and the seal of God and know that it is worship before God versus worship the Satan. Well, what does it mean to us today, to, truly? We need to prepare our lives, strengthen our faith in God, so that when it happens, that we can be a Daniel, we can be the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we can be a Paul. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and God can use us in our conflict with with the laws of the land to to be to glorify his name and help share that message so that God's people that are in Babylon that are worshiping unknowingly can will be uh thought provoking and 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 through the work of the spirit uh respond and turn to God that's what it's all about Yes, and that is my prayer. Not that I focus on the the persecution, but I po focus on my faith and my trust in God, so that at the time that this happens, that it, that it, I don't have to stop and think. I I've already made up my mind today. I make up my mind that I'm with God all the way. So that is my prayer for each one of us, those that are listening and watching. And and, and 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 our families amen so let's let's bow our heads and ask the lord dear heavenly father we we see through your uh, the revelation of, of jesus the book of revelation that that it, 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 tough times are going to come we see it but we've seen in the, all of scripture that it's happened before and you've been able to protect your people you've been able to use their faithfulness to glorify your name. It is my prayer and our prayer as we study that each one of us will daily come to you and, and, and strengthen our trust and our faith in you so that we're ready, that we can decide even now that uh, no matter what, we're gonna stay true to you and, uh, and, and depend on your strength and your protection so that we can be your instruments to share and, and uh, your your name and glorify your name in all that we do and that that uh, your people will that are in, in Babylon now that are uh, that don't understand will, will be brought to a decision to follow you and that we can share eternity with them because of your you working through us we thank you again and ask that you'll be with us daily in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> wow. Uh, I, I'm, I feel bad for those that missed this lesson uh, <laughs> that weren't here tonight, but but uh, happy for all of you that are going to be watching this uh, and studying with us uh, uh, tomorrow and uh, over Sabbath in the coming week. Thank you, Harold. Thank you, uh, Sister Sandra, for, uh, for sharing your insights with us, and, and thank you, all of you out there for joining our lesson study this evening. Uh, now, for everyone that's out there watching this video, I'm going to kind of remind you again, as you're watching the video, please, you'll see a subscribe button on the right lower corner of the video. Please do us the favor of hitting that button. Give us a thumbs up, a like. Uh, thanks for doing that and helping us to reach as many people as possible. Um, now, uh, if you have not previously had an adult Sabbath school quarterly to study along with us, just drop by your nearest Seventh-day Adventist church here in Westminster, Maryland at the Westminster Seventh-day Adventist church or in Georgia, right on the border of uh, North Carolina at the Seventh-day Adventist church of Fannin County, Georgia. Uh, now, you can also uh, go online to either one of the two websites you're going to see in front of you. Uh, the first one, ssnet.org forward slash study guides. Uh, that's the one I use most of the time. Uh, or the Sabbath school, uh, dot adventech.io forward slash en. That one you can uh, download, both of them, you can download a copy of the week's lesson coming up or the entire quarter. Now we're just about finished with this quarter, but the next quarter will be out uh, shortly. So you can uh, download that or you can study online. Um, now, if you have a chance, drop us a line. 
uh, say hi and, uh, you know, tell us how we're doing. Let us know what you think about these classes. You might even decide, hey, I'd like to join or just visit the class live on Thursday evenings. No problem. Just drop us a line at to reach out for food at gmail.com. You're looking at that right now. And we'll send you an invitation, tell you everything you need to know to join us. Um, now please uh, pray for this program. Your prayers will bring blessings to our outreach and open the doors to some who may not know our Savior. Uh, meanwhile, please have a safe and blessed Sabbath starting tomorrow evening uh, and, uh, and a uh, productive and, and, and safe week. We'll see you again next week. Don't forget. God loves you. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a good week. See you next week.